Hey guys, how's it going? And today we are going over how to get better command blocks. This is a question that a lot of people ask and I saw a video by Phoenix SC recently and uh, he said that the best uh, way to quickly learn how to do commands best is to really understand execute and really understand scoreboard. And I'm not here to argue uh, against him on that point because execute and scoreboard are very important. But I think the most important thing is uh, the way that you go about getting better. You don't set out to do a really big project that you, when you have no idea how to do it. That's not exactly the way that you want to go about it. The best thing you can do is to think of an idea, anything. It doesn't have to be good, doesn't have to be bad. Just think of anything and try to make it. And if you can make it, then you have uh, then you're good and if you can't make it then at least you've learned what you can and can't do and uh, part of the process of making and learning is figuring out what works and what doesn't work and when you know something that does work you can go back and try and do it again and use what you know does work to um, to make it better to improve it to make it more organized um, for example I've probably at least seven or eight times I've made very different versions of elevators all of them have worked but this one is the best one because each time I make a better version each time my elevator system gets better and improves and um, and it just it just gets better and better every single time I make it and that's just part of the learning process you have to make things you have to see what works what doesn't work remake things make it again and again and again and again rinse and repeat make it better, new things, different things, new ways to do things. All of that is extremely important if you want to get better. It's just like anything else. You can't learn how to do it great uh, in a short amount of time. It's going to take you a couple uh, tries and a couple attempts, but eventually you can get cool things happening and you can really start to make some good stuff. You can do stuff like this. You can make uh, turrets. You can make zip lines. You can make so many so many things and um and all of this is not something i made in one sitting this is stuff that i made in multiple sittings and redoing and redoing and not every time you're not going to always have it work the first time or the second time or the third time uh, sometimes it's going to break and you're going to have to come up with new ideas and new ways to go about it but eventually things will start to click and you'll start to make things that are better than before and hopefully each time you make something new it's cooler and stronger and faster and more efficient than it is before um, and hopefully you guys can use some of my videos to help you make things better than they were before um, and to improve on all of your skills and your concepts and your ideas um, and really just get better at making and uh, get better at just doing anything in general. Um, so anyways, now if I had to come up with how to get good at commands quickly, and I don't mean fast, I don't mean it's going to take you two days and boom, you're a master, but I think that the best method of approach, um, this is kind of my idea of how you should uh, approach learning commands if you're new or if you're experienced or whatever, Number one is going to be selectors. Selectors are the most crucial part of really any system. Um, selectors are not a command itself, but they are something used in pretty much every single command because you, ha you have to choose what you want to do, uh, who you want to do things to in order to make really anything work. Even if I want to do hi, um, if I just say hi, then it just says hi, but now I can say hi to something else. I can say hi to all of the armor stands in the world just by doing this and now it says hi to every single armor stand and i can see all the names i mean that's not necessarily useful for a concept but just this being able to work with these selectors at e at s at a at p the four selectors and all of the inner workings um of them so all of the different things that you can do with selectors to change what's going on and who you're picking and to manipulate them that's really important because you're going to use them in everything you're going to use them in scoreboard you're going to use them in execute you have to use them in both of those so that would be the first thing that you should focus on and uh 
not not any self-promotion because I don't think mine is the best video, but there is a bunch of tutorial videos out there on selectors and how to use selectors. Then once you figure out how to use selectors, the next step would be to start using them to make things. Like you can't just learn how something works and then just accept uh, expect it to be immediately absorbed into your brain. You have to work with it or else you're not going to um, learn anything. Uh, you're not going to remember it for a long time. So what you have to do is start playing around, maybe create a system where when you um, using the selectors to TP people around. So maybe you make a portal system where you just have this little portal here and then you TP anybody that is inside the portal here to another location. That would be one command, but it's something to you know test things out with. Uh, maybe you want to take the next step up and you want to let people, um, I don't know, click a sign and it tells them how much money they have. Um, but yeah, those are just some ideas of how you need to work with it. Now the next thing I would do is to try and figure out how to use uh, execute or scoreboard. Again, those are both important. Execute or scoreboard. If I would suggest scoreboard first because there's a lot of things you can do with it and it doesn't. it's not very complicated. It's just counting. You're creating something that will count for you. Um, count up, count down, count how many, count how little. It's really useful because you can count. You, know, you can use it for like a currency. You can use it for um, seeing how many players are online. You can use it for counting the amount of time someone jumps or checking when something happens, uh, for example, when someone crouches. So that's the next one that I would do. And then start to get into execute, learn how execute works. Slash execute is super powerful now, more powerful than ever. You have at least 10 things that you can do here uh, in this scroll bar, and all of them can be mixed and matched to do tons of different things that would do totally different uh, scenarios depending on how I order them and I can put as many of them in a row as I want um, there's just so many cool little concepts and cool little things you can do with execute and you're always I'm always learning new things I can do with it um, for example one little trick if you already know the commands pretty well is you can actually store um, you can change players inventory data using execute store results I can store uh, change the player's damage value so that when they decide to reload their gun it will show the amount of time left on the damage bar and all of that is done using just executes and store results and scoreboards to count down um, but it's really simple systems like that then after you can use those pretty well and again you want to use those to make things not just learn how they work the next thing you would want to do is work on now that you've figured out how to use those, I would work on getting out of this. Who cares about these little orange blocks or blue blocks? No one cares about these too much anymore because the new next step is this. It's functions, it's code, it's typing the commands in linear fa fashions in uh, order. And I have tons of tutorials on how to make um, functions and how to set up data packs. Um, but there's so much you can do with this. My entire game here works without, uh, I'm sure you. there were some clips earlier, but the entire game works so smoothly because none of it has any commands. All of it is using functions. There's not a single command in the world. It doesn't, there, you don't need any because everything can be run within functions. If you organize it properly, if you set up the rules properly and how things work. For example, this elevator right here, there's not a single command. There's not a single repeating command. Nothing is happening on repeat. When I click the buy elevator sign, that's when things start to repeat. But then when I get to the top, nothing is playing. There's no commands running because of this elevator. It causes no lag on my game. So once you've been able to start to get a hang of execute and scoreboard, you can take those two things and go into functions. And then you can start doing really insane stuff. Um, you can mix and match them. Functions just let you do a lot of stuff because you can loop. You can make things happen before the game even updates. I can make this Python. When I right click, it shoots a bullet. All of those particles you see in the bullet getting fired happens before my next frame is played. I can also use scoreboard to combine it so that I have two zombies. And now when I headshot them, two of them get hit. And as you can see, it says minus 240, minus 235. Because when I hit one, 
it's going to slow down the bullet, make it travel less distance, but it will hit more than one enemy. There's just so much you can do with it once you mix and match, and really most of it is just execute and scoreboard, which is true. But it's a lot more than that because it's learning how to use functions to your advantage. And there's just so much you can do. So that's pretty much all I wanted to say. Um, but I'm gonna get back into making more normal stuff after this. Um, I'll probably have a video coming out here soon on some secret, uh, like some ways and tips and tricks that I use for data packs to make things run smoother and better. And um, just stuff that is good practice and anybody that works on functions should use these because it will make your life easier and your code look cleaner and easier to understand. I have learned a lot in the past one month alone on how making engines work and I'm coming out with this map making engine for zombies mode. Uh, it's got so much in it. Scoreboard players set at S. Menu disk one, all right. It's got all these tools. We got map making tools. You can set spawn points. You can set doors. You can have custom things happen when the doors open. You can increase, change the cost of almost anything. You can make people flip, pay for it. You can set up map spawn points, the lobby. You set up mystery box locations with randomization. You can set up uh, mystery box locations as well. You can set up pack-a-punch machines. You can set up <laughs> uh, the different easter eggs and tools and perks there's easter egg tools uh, you can make parts that people grab and build at locations you got extra tools you got repeatable things so signs that work more than once you got zip lines that make custom wires and stuff you got turrets you got elevators and all this good configurable stuff but making all of this took a lot of practice and thinking about how it's going to work so that it works the best way that it can. And I also had to organize all my files in a very good and organized manner so that when someone's coming in to the game they uh, and they want to use the editor, all they have to do is go here and all the stuff they need is in the right folders with the right names and it's easy to understand. So again, it's uh, if you're new, I would suggest first selectors, then scoreboard, then execute and always make things as you're going along. Um, and now at the end of the video, I think at the end of every video, I wanna start adding a little challenge to you guys if you're new to commands or you wanna just practice some stuff. I'll just have a little challenge and you can send the uh, post a picture or a video uh, either in the Discord, which will be linked in the description as always, uh, or um, yeah, I guess in the Discord it would be the best place to post it. And I'll go over in the next one, I'll feature any ones that are done that I think are done right or the best version or the most interesting version. So this time, don't worry, I'm not gonna expect you to make like all of any of the stuff I have here. The I'm gonna make it really easy. I'm gonna have a easy, we got easy and a hard mode for now. I don't really have these scripted out or anything, so uh, it'll be better next time around. So the easy challenge is going to be for people that are new. So just make a teleporter that has some kind of particle effect and it teleports people that are inside the teleporter to another location. And then the hard is going to be make a teleporter again, except this teleporter is one that you can make by placing down a couple, like using however you want, maybe put down uh, one command for one of the corners and then another command for the other corner, but make a configurable teleporter that will basically allow the player to create a teleporter of a certain size. It, it could be the same size, as complicated as you guys want, um, but make a teleporter that is modular in the sense that I put this teleporter down Without using code, I use in-game tools that you make. Make a teleporter that will go to another teleporter, so they'll link up. So that would be kind of difficult, but I am sure that if you're more advanced, it is possible. So I'm interested to see if any of you guys can do either of them, really. And uh, if you have any cool ideas or anything you want me to go over, let me know in the comments. I'll be watching. See you guys later. Peace.